Hello everybody and welcome to today's live watercolour painting. So I'm just going to be chatting for a short while until people start coming in. So the reason why I'm doing this painting today, it's a castle. Uh, and we're looking at, up at it at a, a very acute angle from below. Now, last year I did a, a drawing on uh, how to make things go up in perspective like that as, as you look up at it. And obviously it's the opposite if you, if you go down. And I said I'd do a painting uh, to show the end product of it but you know life gets uh, a bit complex and we move on and we do other things but this is the part two of the actual drawing and later on after the live I will link the original drawing of this uh, so that you can go and watch that video and understand the principles that are behind the perspective eye line viewpoint hi goswina nice to see you so you can go back and watch that video the only difference is from what i said in the video uh, to this is that uh, i said i were going to do it on some uh, dale aroni paper and that has uh, you know i've not got any more of that paper anymore so uh, this is its replacement some um st cuthbert's mill milford paper which is an 100 percent cotton paper i'll be um using uh my white knights and goswina will be happy that i'm doing that because i believe she's getting some white knights and she's getting a really nice set as well so um We'll be having a go with those, although these colours won't necessarily correspond exactly with what Goswin has got. So, um, and here are the three brushes that I intend on using today. Uh, a big mop-like pointed quill. Uh, another pointed another pointed quill but this has got a bit more of a precise uh sharpness to it uh it, it's also um a synthetic brush that so you've got a little bit more control over the brush in that sense it springs back to where it needs to be and for doing very high detail but i don't think i'll be doing an awful lot i'll be using this calligraphy brush hi danina I'm just explaining the tools and equipment that I'm using. Uh, just generally other bits of equipment that you might feel uh, appropriate. Some tissue paper for blotting your water out. Your water, obviously, and a little dabby rag. Now your dab rag, you just, you know, if you've got too much water, just dab it off a bit and you're ready to go. So I'm just going to set up now to uh, a, a position where I can see my reference image. Because I'm working from a reference image today that I got off of uh, one of the free uh, internet things. Hello, Danina. Uh, Danina, do you know Goswina? I don't know. Um, I'm going to click on that. And we're near, nearly ready to go. Hopefully, once this decides it's going to uh, set up, that's perfect. Now, the only difference there is uh, from the... Um, drawing i've got 
and the actual reference image is I put some little soldiers guarding the entrance gate. So that's really it for uh, uh, the differences, but mainly that's where it is. So we're going to make a start. Another reason why I'm doing this painting is it's because uh, this year I'm looking really focused uh, at atmospherics and this is a good example of light atmospherics so let's let's just have a look at what we mean now i'm going to um give myself some space here by adding a bit of water there and i'm, I'm going to get some light yellow and then some yellow ochre Now that might be a bit a bit green. I'm going to mop that out because uh, that to me is a tiny bit bit too lemony. Must have got that. Uh, so again, I'll. That's a bit better. So let's get some of that uh, goldy yellow. Yeah. It's almost like a sandstone colour and really, really make that very, very, very light and wet. And I'm going to go all over there. Like that. Look, I'm going, don't worry about going over things. It, it really is not a big deal. And we're going to bring that there and bring it down there. Not so much here. That side of the castle, uh, very, very light. And uh, this area we're going to make a lot stronger with that. Uh, another thing I might do there is, is around that area. And while this is still wet, Uh, yeah, of course you can, Danina. You're more than welcome. Uh, put a little bit there as well. Right, so that's like a, a bit of a... Well, I might as well do that bit as well. So it's got an overall yellow, but I, I, I don't want it just to be one tone. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a deeper, a, a deeper colour in round here. It has to be deeper than that as well, even more deeper. Uh, this side as well will be deep, deeper. And I'm just adding a little bit of blue to it. That's all really, all this side. And that there. And uh, most of that there. And uh, again, we're going to... That area as well is going to be fairly dark. You see how I'm, I'm, I'm really not doing highly detailed areas that... We're thinking about the universal image at the moment. Right. That, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, that particular procedure done. Maybe, maybe a bit more there. What I do want to do now is the sky isn't yellow. It's a blue colour. And we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, wipe that out of there. So I've got a nice clean arrangement of. Only thing is uh, with this particular palette, is uh, it's not got a, a lot of mixing space. You can get it on screen. Hey Bruce. Um, I got 
uh, I got cut off uh, while I was watching you, Bruce, and my computer's been crashing, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's because of it being quite hot here at the moment and my computer's uh, getting a bit too a bit too hot. So at this side, light is coming from this side. So what I'm going to do is darken that area. And while I'm darkening that area, I'm going to darken certain areas like that. And these are all very, very, very thin washers. That's dark as well. Uh, the other thing that's slightly dark is there and that. So I'm going to get I'm going to get a bit of brown there. Could be a a, a burnt sienna or a, something like that, and mix it in with some of that blue. And in a downward stroke, I'm just going to and then bring that like that. And this area wants to be quite where I'm working on here is very um in the background and it's fuzzy so that's what we want to do and introduce some of that into the overall painting no don't just have it in one area and that's it Now, just to give that a nice, even, um, I'm going to take some more of that blue and bring that over and let it, let it settle in a bit more. Now, it's getting to the stage where I'm thinking I need now to let it dry for a bit. And that's the only problem with watercolour uh, painting. You have to stop for a bit and go, right it's time to let it do its natural thing but uh, we haven't got time to do that so i'm gonna i'm gonna um take a little bit there out and uh, while we've still got uh, we'll create texture like that. that'll be a nice thing you can also create texture here as well. I don't want to do any texture there because what I don't want in that is uh, lots of detail because it's in the background that. But uh, at this moment in time, I think we're on course. Making sure that everything that's off to this left side is all fairly light. Everything off to this side, although there will be a left-hand side for everything, uh, is being overshadowed by the rest of the castle. So that's still going to be in shade. So let's uh, work on uh, another area first. Uh, we're going to get a, a bit of um, this deep red. And mix it in with a bit of bit of blue until we get a nice purple. I think I've just overdone it like there. There you go, that's a nice purple. Um, there. And then bring it across and down. And uh, what shall we do colour wise? I think I'll get a lemon yellow. And that's that blocked in. But what we do want to do is try and take some of that colour and apply it also. Not as much at this side, because light's hitting it and it will have a different effect. Let's see if I can uh, get some green in it. Might be a bit weird that, but a bit more blue. 
That's too much there. Right. I'm going to uh, now continue on. Let's just have a look. Ian is in his element. <laughs> well, I hope so. I've been doing this for quite a few years, so I ought to be getting at least half decent at it. Um. I'm going to deepen these and look, I'm not I'm not doing overly delicate work with it you've really got to, with watercolors you've got to learn to uh, loosen up as best you can I'm going to take that obviously we with certain elements of the painting tighten up yeah and and try and be a bit you know, a bit more uh, delicate about what you're doing. But on the whole, it's a very free kind of um, process, watercolour painting. And it, it likes being loose. And the more you can get things to flow into one another, the better. And I'm trying my absolute best to make things um, have a sense of detail without over detailing the artwork. And you do that by doing things in a very abstract way. So, this side of the castle, we've got to be really, really careful that we don't overdo it because uh, I, I want to keep that really nice sense of, uh, in fact, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. I've, I've got another area to do before we even approach that. I'm going to mix a really light brown, and from here I'm going to, and I'm going to try and avoid that. I'm just going to get that edge there. And then, and before it dries, I'm going to pull that back a bit so it softens up. You get rid you get those edges and soften the edge up. And that gives you like a, a almost a natural graduation. And that can go up as far as you want it to go up like that. That then, when it when that's dry, that then will give you an opportunity to put uh, because that's light. You can put a dark there. I see. So, not doing an awful lot around here. So, let's have a look at um, getting some of that in. And I'm going to be a bit more detailed here because this is closer to us. And that, that, that really um, gives you a license to be a, a lot more detailed. So, and a lot more expressive with your colour. So I'm going to get uh, a bit of blue, that ultramarine blue, and a little bit of that uh, yellow ochre. 
so we're getting like a, a deepish green and uh, under here we're gonna go uh, adding a little bit of that in there and just off to that side as well while we're while we're putting some dark things in there's some part of the building there that fades off and it's got some little peepholes there like castles do have so we're just going to place that in and you know just as a reminder to us that it's there uh i'm gonna get get some brown very very light in application here but still dark and just go over that bit there and um i'm going to remove a lot of it just so it's a very transparent dark now one thing you can do to do that is uh go like that there you go so we're starting to get to a position where uh most of the painting's blocked in and i'm gonna it suggest all this is cobbled i'm not going to paint every cobble but i am going to suggest that it's a bit you know wibbly wobbly this particular path and again, I'm going to reinforce that area as well, make that really dark. So you know that that's the edge of that. Bit of a, a dark area there. Now, some of these roofs, uh, and there's a multitude of roofs on this building, are quite dark. So let's see if we can, especially off to the right hand side. And they're going to help us um, define certain other parts of the building. For example, like that. Although I'm going to bring that down like that a bit. Uh, let's get some other parts of the uh, roof in. That's a roof there. That's a, a bit of a roof. And with such a complicated building, I personally would not bother. I rose. Uh, I, I would not bother doing every little nitty gritty little bit. Honestly, it's just not even worth contemplating it's like unless you want to spend hours and hours and hours and hours on a painting and uh, that's fair enough if, if you want to do that we're going to uh, darken that area there and uh, while we're on that i'm going to darken that as well just to bring it a little bit more in line with one another as colors And soften those edges and slowly but surely we're starting to get a hopefully a castle now it may not be exact to the um to the reference image but i'm i'm putting bits of detail in where i think it would be interesting to have it I'm 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 not absolutely following the um reference image one hundred percent. So because you can get a bit bogged down with uh, a reference image if you care if you're not careful. So get this let's see if we can get something to completion now a little bit of 
uh, this area here, the uh, hills. Uh, well, it's not an hill. It's the, it's the rock face on which the castle is um, is sat on. Hello, Julia. Uh, I think maybe for the time being, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out a bit. Yeah, for now that's that's that okay. In fact, actually, what I will do is I'll go. Um, let's see if we can uh, eye out some of these other details. Everything again off to the right hand side of things is going to be a lot darker. We've got this like circular bit here that has uh, a couple of windows. And that there is going to be dark like that. It's got like a... The next bit to do is round here. And I'm to be frank, I'm going to try and avoid doing hardly anything at this area. It's got like a little bit of a like that. And I'm going to get the very lightest of washers of uh, this like gold ochre and go a little bit round various areas just to add value. It's going to be darker there and, and there. I know you may not see that very much, but there is a, a very evident difference in uh, in certain areas. Um, and then it's just a matter of like picking out areas that light won't hit as much. Uh, a bit of a roof there. They do tend to be fairly detailed, these things. And I'm not I'm not the person who likes way too much detail. So I, I like to help your viewpoint uh, see it for itself. It's a kind of a line all the way around there. But I've worked on that enough for now. You can paint forever with you. Uh, I, I, what do you mean? These can be re-wet at any time. Gosh, Weena, it's not it's not like acrylic. You, uh, you I could have these in ten years time. Uh, something like that will take me, and I, I'm a regular painter, two maybe three years to use up. Because there is no waste with watercolor. You just re-wet your palette, and it's good to go. That's the good thing about watercolour painting is um, the fact that you can use 100% of the paint. It, it, it don't run out. It don't, it don't, it doesn't, um, 
you know become the only thing that can happen with it if you don't store them right and i've never come across it is is uh it can be infected with mildew now if that happens obviously you uh, you don't want to be painting your uh, paintings with mildew on it uh but i've never seen that happen ever but in my entire working life uh, 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 and that's more down to your um working environment that you put the paints in than anything else you know where uh, what a bit of Notice I'm not putting every brick and every eye detail into things. Right. For the uh, early part of the painting, I think we're we're almost done. Right. Only thing I want to do around there is that. Now I'm going to uh, feather that out a bit. And uh, that looks as though we're going in the right direction. Believe it or not, we're not that far away from doing the details. All I want to do now is... Uh, I'm going to very carefully paint round my soldiers. And this is the entrance where... link that up so we've got the entrance we're painted in um maybe a bit of detail in on that if i can just pick up various bits and we're going to reinforce what we did earlier with um with this entrance where and uh -huh. And again, uh, I need to keep checking to see whether my me, me dark areas are strong enough. Because it's a very light painting and we need to counterbalance that with some much darker areas. Making sure that we've not got too stronger hard edges with them. Because I still need to be able to um, feather out into... With that, I'm going to take a risk here and go at like that. All right. You can tell I'm concentrating, can't you? <laughs> So how has your guys week then been up to now? What you what you up to? Uh, what what's in the plans in the pipelines? And hopefully, I mean, this is like part two of a video. 
uh, which looks at how we look at things in perspective and we can uh, oh, oh, but I mean the painting doesn't really tell you anything about the story of that the, the actual main work of perspective is done when you're actually drawing the thing out in the first place and we just need to start looking out for details now so why i'm using this i do not know uh, across there we've got that and uh, various bits of buildings will have all sorts of different uh, things on it like that. just um there you go I'm going to uh, deepen up that. But we're going to push that back a bit. And uh, deepen certain areas still. Uh, nearly there with the de uh, detailing side of things. Just want to uh, get a few more things established and then we can uh, start looking more seriously at the final detail. It's good to put directional strokes in your work. Uh, as it gives people a sense of where to go within the painting. Right. right, I'm faffing about too much with that. It's time for a fresh pot and uh, some detailing work. So, really, and most of that. Uh, the first thing I want to do is um, get my soldiers in and to start with I'm going to do a fairly light thing like that don't know if you'll see that but uh, we'll let that dry for a little bit and then we'll put some other features in it uh, just see that bit there odd uh, flick here and there of uh, bits of the roof and I'm, I'm going to be fairly expressive in the way that I do this it's not going to be because the painting is quite loose I don't want to be fussing too much with the detail. So and it, it, it's a good time to start doing a bit more dry brush now. Now dr dry brush is where you have a lot less water in your in your paint mixture. Therefore, it don't go as far, but it has a much more stronger and bolder uh, expression. Uh, I'm going to avoid as much as I can at that side, because I want to keep that quite soft. And again, as you're getting farther away, it's they're just flicks. They're not 
they're not um anything that you could go oh that's that or that's that but they all build up into an eventual uh, end situation and uh, i don't think we're that far away from uh, not in stay away Uh, just need to do some bits here. Um, these guards, they've got some uh, spears or whatever they are. They're called cudgels. They're almost like swords on end of a... Uh, on end of a pole. It's just to give like a, a representation. It's not. I'm not going for photo realism here. So, what time are we on? Oh, don't time fly when you're having fun. So, do you know, I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that I'm not absolutely that far off completion. So, what I will do is, uh, when you start getting that kind of feeling, that's when you start thinking, time to stop. I'm just going to uh, deepen that area. Uh, I think what I'll do is, you know, just to give it a bit of pizzazz. I'm gonna because it is a little bit uh, muted. This uh, painting. Um, last but not least, I'm, I am going to do a lot more shading in this, I've decided. Just to, you know, give the uh, overall painting a, a, a lot more strength. And I think that in real terms is the painting basically done. So a quick, what are we, uh, 45 minute painting, uh, you can achieve quite a bit. But this has been the second part of the uh, process where we originally did a drawing explaining how uh, to create the correct perspective and the the painting itself really does hang a lot on getting your castle right uh, the 
people sometimes like do things too square as though you're directly on it the the video that i did before it will explain what i'm talking about better than me now so if you go back and you watch that you'll get the context of this painting that we're doing today so i'll thank you for your time all and uh, we hope to see you about in the internet environment sometime during the week stay safe and thank you for your time and uh, we'll see you the next time we do a live or uh, a recorded video so bye for now all and uh, take care bye bye, 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 bye.